Hey YouTube, welcome back to the garage, welcome back to the Push project, and in today's video we're going to be looking at the electronic system for the E50. We have, what came with the kit was, from Treeland, was the stator plate, which replaces the stock stator plate. We have a CDI box, we have the ignition coil obviously, and a voltage uh, regulator rectifier for your your electronics. So I'll be mocking this up on the engine. I'll install the stator plate uh, to to that area of the engine and I'll be mocking up the wiring and then I think I'll also try and put the engine into the frame uh, today so it can all kind of all be as one as one unit. So here's the deal. We've got the new stator plate without points. We've got this guy which is a voltage regulator which will probably mount somewhere to the to the bike frame. Then we've got this guy which is a CDI box which should plug directly up to this somehow. And then we've got the... Uh, that was not it. Here's the coil. So these three major components uh, are to be installed. That's the goal for today. So the old stator plate, which is here, it honestly looks in pretty good condition. And I otherwise would not replace it. I mean, the points, I can look in there and I see they're fine. I haven't tested it, but I mean, I have no reason to believe that there's anything wrong with these with this uh, with the stator plate but the fact is I don't have any of the other stuff and this just came with the kit so I'll take it but this is the old little rubber gasket guy that goes in here and uh, these new wire ends don't fit in there however I think I'm just gonna chop them off for a couple of reasons a it's so much longer compared to the old one so I know I won't need that much length here and B, I don't know if I even want to use these because it, by the looks of it, um, not all of these things uh, will line up, basically. Because there's a bunch of spade connectors and then there's some bullet connectors here. And so I think I'm just going to say goodbye to these and chop them off. Okay, so now I can take these wires through here. Feed it through. Take that nut off. And I'm not going to fix this down yet because I'm not sure if I have to time this or not. Basically, I mean, with the points, you, you do time it, and I'm sure that this works the, the same way, so I'm not going to do that just yet. But what I am going to do is I'm going to cut this green insulation and feed this, uh, feed the wires through this old rubber guy. So the insulation's off. Now, yeah, I don't know. I took these out just now, but now I'll feed the these wires through this guy. Okay, so it's through the rubber gasket and I put the green shielding back on. So now I'll just put the screws in the stator plate to hold it temporarily, just for now. Hmm. 
Okay, so there's three screws that hold this in, and now that they're in, it leaves us with this range of motion to uh, basically time the engine, I guess. Again, if it even needs to be timed in this manner anymore, I'm not exactly sure. So now I'll... Now actually I'll look on the internet because there's a wiring diagram for this on Moped, uh, on Moped Army, so give me a second to look for that. Okay, so it turns out for the time being, it's, you know, early 2021, mid-2021, 20, 20, uh, the Treatland uh, electronics kit, the CDI kit for the E50, uh, it's a little bit different than it usually is, so the Moped Army wiki uh, CDI page, uh, that wiring diagram is not correct. However, the listing, the Treatland listing, has the wiring diagram uh, written out. So I've just drawn it here. So it, what it comes with is the stator plate, uh, the CDI box, which is from a brand called Piet Card, I believe, uh, the voltage regulator, and then your ignition coil. So the stator has four wires coming out, uh, a brown, or is it five? Let's see. No, it's got four. Yep, it's got four. So what did I write here? Red to lights. Hmm. I'll have to look at that. But the brown is ground. White is to the Piet card, to the gray. Uh, the red is to the blue on the, on the CDI box. And then yellow is to the regulator. Okay, so, you know what? I think I understand. There was a bit of a verbiage kind of mix-up in the write-up. It said red, but it didn't it didn't uh, specify. So that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so the stator, it's got the brown to ground, white to the gray on the CDI, red to the blue on the CDI, and yellow to the blue on the regulator. Then the CDI box those two connections exist, and then the red just goes to the coil, and then it's got a black to ground. And then for the regulator, it takes the yellow to the blue, and then the red just goes to your headlight and your tail light, basically. And then your coil obviously connects to your spark plug. So what that looks like on the bike is your CDI, or rather your stator plate under the stator, obviously, or that's the rotor, comes out here. Here's your four wires, your brown, white, red, yellow. So here's the brown to ground, just for now. The yellow goes off to the voltage regulator, and this red will connect to your headlights and taillights, or whatever else you decide to put on. The red and white here go to the, the CDI box here, to the gray and the blue, and then this red, where is it? This red goes to the coil and then obviously that comes up here and there's a spark plug boot that I don't have right now it's uh, over there I do have it I just haven't installed it is what I mean and that goes right on your on your plug so obviously I hooked it up and I tried putting the carb and the exhaust on tried to see if it would start up but I couldn't get it to because the drill really wouldn't get it uh, spinning fast enough but hopefully it'll be on the bike or back on the bike soon enough, and we'll get to hear it rip. So the carb that I have, I'll probably talk about it later, but it's just a Delorto carburetor, and this uh, exhaust pipe is just the Chrome Boss exhaust from Treats. Everything is from Treats. It's got a nice little decal on it, but yeah, you'll, you'll see more of this later. But here is the all-important um, wiring diagram, and I'll put the parts that I got off Treats. I'll put the links in the description just in case anybody is uh, trying to follow along. So basically here's where we're at. I've got the engine, uh, I guess 90% done. I took the electrics off just for now while I'm fitting it and the carb is off just so I don't get it all nasty or anything. And basically I just wanna try and fit the engine into the frame so they can be one part, or one piece. Uh, basically what I wanna do is, you know, make sure the engine runs, and I am having a hard time doing that 
with it standing alone. So I want to get it into the frame and get the back wheel on the frame so that I can kick over the back wheel and use it to try and start the engine. So yeah, I'll try and fit the frame to the engine right now. Okay, so there we go. The engine is now mounted to the frame pretty much completely. I don't think I really need to remove it again. Um, I might have to take the exhaust off to get the chain on, but otherwise I think everything can kind of stay as it is right now. So the next thing is to mount the rear wheel and like I said, run the chain there. I'll also probably have to put the shock on so that the wheel doesn't just go up into the fender. Um, yeah, obviously the, the sprocket's gotta go on. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'll also need a spacer for here. I, I think stock. Uh, the exhaust bracket is supposed to go in front of this, or rather the exhaust mounting hole thing on the actual exhaust is supposed to go in front of this bracket, but it just wants to be behind. That's just how it lines up, so I'll have to come up with some kind of spacer. It wants about a quarter inch, a little less, and uh, just kind of push it down, set it back, and run, a, run some hardware through there. 
uh, yeah, otherwise everything else lined up. Uh, this is one of the old uh, mounting bolts. I got new ones, but I, I don't have enough washers. I was short one washer. So this will probably come out because I only had five washers. So there's two here, two here, but only one here. And this one happened to have one on it. So I just used it. I mean, I could have just put the new one on, but whatever. Not a big deal. I'll replace it anyway. Um, yeah, I think... Oh, I know. Next, I'll put the petcock on, on the other side. The tank is in really nice condition, which is nice. There's, like, hardly any rust in there. So, yeah, I don't know if you can see in there right now. Not really. It's a little shadowy, but... But, yeah, I'll put the petcock on, and I'll see what kind of fuel line... I might need. So I've got the petcock installed. Basically, it just looks like a little, like L-shaped thing, kind of going up into the into the tank here. And I've got it figured out where this direction is off, on, and reserve. So I got it basically pointing straight up and down. It's a little bit forward, but that's fine. Hopefully, it won't leak or anything. Uh, another thing is that the new bolts that I have going through here. Uh, they're a little bit long looking, but this one's the the original and it's really not that much uh, shorter, so I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm gonna leave them. I know that the clutch arm is backwards. I'll fix that eventually. <laughs> and um, the next thing I want to do is see where I'm gonna wrap my wiring. Uh, these two holes, I believe, is where the bus bar kind of thing goes. I don't know what you would call that, but this is where all the wires kind of meet up. So I'm going to see where I want to mount this. I've got a little bracket that mounts in this hole where the original coil uh, bolts up to. Unfortunately, this coil, I guess it's like an upgraded one or something. It's just the one that was sent to me with the uh, with the electronics kit, but it doesn't fit. These two holes are, here I can show you. This is the original, and then you can see those holes do not line up. So I'll, I'll have to decide what to do. Maybe I'll drill a hole. Maybe I'll just use one. Maybe I'll mount it somewhere completely different. I don't know yet. And then these two, these also don't need to be mounted. The uh, the CDI box and the voltage regulator. Where is it? Here it is. These don't have to be mounted to the frame per se. They don't really have to be grounded. But I'll see, you know, just where where a good spot for them is. I have to decide. So yeah, I'll just see about routing these wires and. I'll probably trim them a little bit so that there's not so much excess floating around here.